Mwaleza Ma TV Amu Enang Ena Ok, Senator Lematian Ezena Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sorry, the mic is higher than me. <laughs> um, it's an incredible privilege to serve the youth of our country, the heroic people of Kenya, and the marginalized minorities. I pay gratitude to God Almighty for all the life and blessings he bestowed upon me. Mr. Speaker, allow me to thank some very outstanding people in my life. First, of, first and foremost, my very supportive family, my late father, Rafael Malitian, who was a great statesman and who taught me a lot about love for country and love for humanity. Allow me, Mr. Speaker, to express my profound gratitude to His Excellency, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, the former Prime Minister and the AU Envoy for Infrastructural Development, my political mentor and father, an indefatigable Pan-Africanist whose commitment and ideals for democracy and social justice in Africa have inspired generations of political activists across the continent. His understanding for the need for robust dialogues and links between generations and the African Renaissance at large is legendary. And it is that unique ability that has enabled me a girl from the nomadic hills of Samburu North to stand before this honorable house today to represent my people. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is very easier said than done that normally young beautiful girls receive a lot of support. But I want to demystify <laughs> that misconception. In fact, the movement I started, which was dubbed Youth for Youth, is unstoppable. I promise them that I will convey their hopes and aspirations, and I will show in word and action that the youth represent the very best of our country today and in the future. I will endeavor to expedite action on all fronts, to advance the interests of the youth, the underprivileged, and the minority communities. And on that regard, I rise past one to the standing order of 52 to make order 52 to make a statement on the matter of countywide concern regarding the insecurity situation in Samburu County. Mr. Speaker. Months ago, Samburu County has been embroiled in bloody conflicts and rising cases of cattle rustling, which has aimed, which has claimed so many lives, including security personnel and local residents, as well as wanton destruction of property. Sporadic bandit, bandit attacks in several parts of Samburu County have become the norm and the county residents are living in total fear of attacks. Mr. Speaker, in a span of just one week, a bandit has led the loss of life of five family members. Apart from the recent incident that happened in Loiborunkare and Kurkur, more people have lost their lives and others are hospitalized. Further, the livestock have been driven down the hills of a common known bandit territory in Tiati constituency, Baringo County. Mr. Speaker, the government has remained unresponsive and as usual, it will issue a press statement on operations in the affected area. We are tired of these operations. The conflict has seen more than 4,500 households displaced across the entire county. And these numbers 
keep rising as more raids are witnessed. Mr. Speaker, I'm calling upon the government to act against politicians and other leaders who incite violence. Already, certain known names and ID numbers have been submitted, but no action has been taken by the, rel the, rel the relevant security agencies. I also urge security agencies to take a decisive action against the bandits and their, support and their supporters as to restore calm in the region. The mere rhetoric from the government officials is not enough to reassure our locals. Mr. Speaker, the, the situation is bigger than banditry. It is robbery with violence. It is a global syndicate. Because otherwise, how do you explain that people who are dying in, of hunger, people who are living in abject poverty, can, can afford to buy very powerful weapons? I'm challenging my colleagues on the government side to join us in speaking in one voice to condemn this matter, Mr. Speaker. Because our forefathers said that ignorance is a voluntary misfortune. Mr. Speaker, a lie has many variations, while truth has none. The loss of lives, coupled with the raging famine in Samburu County and other parts of the northern region, have become a full-blown disaster and we cannot afford to bury our heads in the sand. I want to remind the ruling coalition that a bird that flies off the earth and lands on an anthill is still on earth. The problems of the nation must bring us together by all means. And Mr. Speaker, if indeed there are leaders who are bloodthirsty and want the government to deal, we want the government to deal with them ruthlessly. As, as the president promised, regardless of their being in either part of the political divide, someone out there is deliberately poking the nose of the administration and yet no response. A bandit is a criminal and an enemy of the state. The government must ensure that citizens are well protected within their borders. The state must demonstrate its capacity to deal with internal, internal criminals before they can tell us anything about external criminals. Mr. Speaker, the previous disarmament exercise conducted by the government have not been successful because they were uncoordinated in approach. And we saw members of Samburu County surrendering their arms, but our Pokot counterparts were not disarmed. The result, Mr. Speaker, is that not so long ago, the 46 police officers were massacred in Suguta Valley and police guns stolen and are still in the hands of these bandits. This has continued to aggravate the perennial conflict in Samburu County. And as a result, mistrust has developed between the people and the, the very security forces that are supposed to protect the people. The disarmament exercise will likely complicate the current humanitarian crisis in the region, experienced by the sick, the elderly, the pregnant women, the lactating mothers, and students. The conflict continues to negatively impact the lives and livelihoods of the local Samburus, especially the people I've mentioned above, and other vulnerable groups. Mr. Speaker, we have lost a huge number of youth who contribute tremendously to the GDP of this country. The people whom their families depend as breadwinners. Mr. Speaker, due to the grievous nature, nature of and the urgency of the issues I've raised, I request you to refer this matter to the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense and Foreign Relations for consideration. But Mr. Speaker, although the statement is under the Standing Order 52, because of the sensitivity of this matter, I kindly request you to commit this statement to the Committee on Security to investigate, and I'm willing to provide the Committee with specifics of areas of focus. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. Ingoreza Ma TV. Amu enang ena.